Well, I'd like to thank the uh, authors first, uh, Michael and Jason, for very interesting, significant research uh, looking at a very important topic, which is the household financial response to a significant economic uh, downturn. Uh, my, my dominant response as I went through this research was very interesting, and I wish that there's more of it and, and more extensions. Uh, I'd like to organize my thoughts today around first just quickly summarizing uh, the results that were presented very briefly, just sort of a headline, and then a discussion about why this research is important from several perspectives, general, the household, the employer perspective, macroeconomic policy, as well as public policy. It was helpful in, in for organizing my own thoughts and going through this, and perhaps this will be helpful for you as well. Then provide some brief observations for each, each paper in turn. Uh, most of the observations have to do with uh, extension, some of which you've anticipated, I think, in the early, early comments. The first paper, Hurt and Ritter, data, uh, three inter interesting complementary intersecting data sources, longitudinal nature, uh, the HRS survey, CAMS and internet study, looking at, uh, depending on how you define it, 51 plus or 55 plus, looking at the influence of exogenous shocks on asset prices, stock and housing values, on endogenous household responses, levels of debt, spending, work, the quest probability. Uh, the headlines, uh, as I took it away from the research, were very significant effects, both statistically and in terms of magnitude, of the shock on retirees and pre-retirees. Generally, we saw that debt rises, spending declines, thereby saving increasing. Working lives extend, or intended working lives extend, and expected bequests also decline. There are variations on this, obviously, around employment status, age, uh, and presumably the presence of uh, guaranteed income in retirement. So important qualifications around that, but those were the, those were the dominant responses. Second paper, uh, the data is a continuous work history sample, survey of relevant literature, uh, given that this is more of a survey article. Uh, the findings are that there's both a secular and cyclical trend in claiming age, particularly around age 62 claiming age, so a downward secular trend with a, with a cyclical response as well. Important implications for retirement benefits funding and financial security from a public policy perspective. And then changed gears a little bit talking about the federal efforts to improve awareness, understanding, uh, and the role in retirement of Social Security among those receiving the Social Security benefit statement. Uh, again, significant cyclical effects we see on claiming age, beneficial effects on communication through retirement planning, but again, more research and communication is needed. It sounds like a lot of data is becoming available and there, it's uh, a lot of richness to be uncovered there. Why is this research important and what, what are the implications of the findings here? So first of all, the business cycle will always be with us. We know that. This one was particularly painful, but understanding the, the household financial responses to cyclical changes is very important. This recent financial crisis uh, can be very educational, as Brett mentioned before. It's a natural experiment, although very painful. Uh, we also have a couple of things going on here. The ability to manage the retirement of a very large co cohort coming through the baby boom generation, at the same time that we're changing the structure of retirement for individuals. Big cohort coming through, an important transition where, uh, unfortunately, DB benefits are uh, declining in importance, DC benefits are increasing in importance. It starts to increase the sensitivity of household financial responses to stock to uh, asset prices. In terms of household financial security, Home's well-being is, is very closely tied to the macro cycle and asset prices in ways uh, not present previously. There's less insulation from the business cycle and asset price swings, and likely stronger behavioral reactions than we've seen previously. Strength of these uh, connections are likely to grow over time as we see gradual transition, generational <coughs> change from a DB world to a DC world. Uh, housing and leverage is becoming more important uh, than before. As we saw before, retirees and many retirees are going into retirement holding more debt connected to their house than previously, uh, and uh, it'll, it'll have an effect uh, on, on retirement planning. In particular, uh, if there's greater debt and greater liquefaction of this asset, uh, folks will have uh, fewer resources uh, in retirement and stronger, connect, stronger responses to the asset prices. We also see the, the possibility of a multi-generational balance sheet erosion through decline in home equity and a decline in expected uh, uh, bequests, size, and incidence. So this, we could see this folding, uh, unfolding over multiple generations as folks dig into balance sheets uh, and components that, that uh, are declining over time. And a, an important question that we can pose, how can we improve retiree financial security in this environment? The employer perspective, uh, labor supply responses are, are closely uh, observed here and, and analyzed. Uh, I think it has big, big effects on the overall macroeconomy. From an employer's perspective, they need to anticipate the entry, exit, tenure, compensation demands 
of, uh, over the business cycle as households and employees respond. There's a change in demographic composition and age profile of, of the workforce, uh, the older with cyclical swings. And then there's an extension, an intended extension of working lives. So what can employers do to accommodate uh, workers' desire to stay in the workforce longer? And then interesting questions around, arise around the design of optimal benefit structures in terms of retirement financing, planning, advice, behaviors, and risk mitigation. What are the macroeconomic implications? There are new behavioral feedback loops that are appearing here between uh, household interest responses and asset prices in particular. The strength and magnitude of those are likely to grow over time. Uh, we probably need to update the response models frequently because there is a generational change happening here. The labor supply response is very important. The, the answer to so many uh, uh, questions or problems or issues around household financial security is keep working, working longer. And hopefully people are able to do that. In some cases they're not able to. But there's a desire for that to happen. So understanding the labor supply response to some uh, asset prices and changes in the economy is very important. Uh, and then the, the uh, macro policy levels levers, the power of those uh, levers will change over time. Moving forward, public policy implications. Obviously, it has lots of implications for the financing of uh, public benefits programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Also, disability, frankly. It, it, it appears increasingly disability tends to be a substitute in the short term, early retirement, if retirement benefits cannot be accessed directly. So that's, that's a public policy issue that will probably come up more in the future that we'll have to address. Um, we talked about the value of retirement planning communications through the Social Security Benefits Statement. Uh, that's a very important area for the government to invest in. And then a question, I guess, is what, what, is the, what are the political implications and political force of a financially distressed set of retirees? And we have a very large cohort of folks going into retirement financially distressed, but they continue to vote. What sort of effects do they have on benefit structures and taxation structures? Just going back to the papers uh, for some additional comments. The first paper, uh, positive things to say about data set, very interesting use of uh, intersecting three complementary data sets. Uh, the use of expectations of households, posing questions around uh, how is your current economic behavior connected to your expectations about future home prices, future changes in the stock market. That's the way economic, model, economic theory is modeled, so it's great to be able to see that type of use. Longitudinal data, so consistent tracking of behavior versus change in life cycle over, over 10 years. The ability to uh, control for fixed effects among households and to reduce the issues that sometimes arise around admitted variable bias and cross-sectional data sets is great. A couple of comments on the, the measure of investment wealth. It would be great to see a broader uh, definition of uh, portfolio performance and size, so not just equities, but can we say something about changes in the fixed income component of portfolios, which we've seen is increasingly important for folks. Can we broaden the measure to include international or global equities? Maybe we want to include some measure of commodities as well. There's a lot of uh, investment in gold these days. So being able to connect some of those finer <coughs> measures of investment wealth to, human, to uh, household financial behavior would be helpful. Can we partition the data to get some finer views by income, household size, geography, <laughs> uh, employment <coughs> industry, presence of DB benefits? I know that in some cases th these data exist, other cases they don't. But ca can we include some of those other uh, independent variables to get uh, finer distinctions around the connections? And of course, continue research as some more of this data becomes available. The second paper, uh, seeing the age 62 claim behavior uh, measured by cohort over time and by gender was very interesting and I, I suspect involved a lot of work to, to get that. Um, uh, observing the secular and cyclical effects, the, the secular uh, decline in claiming behavior or age, uh, the, the cyclical uh, response has a lot of implications for uh, benefits programs and financial uh, funding of those programs. A couple of thoughts about future extensions. I think some of this has been anticipated. Um, finer views, can we partition the age 62 claim behavior to include income level uh, employment industry, wealth, geography, presence of DB if, if available. That would, and I think that's all intended, so it would be interesting. Can we show the evolution of full claiming age distribution over time? So it's interesting to see early claiming, age 62. What about late claiming, age 70 and a half? Or, or full retirement age, 65, 66, 67? Again, I know this involves a lot of work, but it would be very, very interesting to see those results. Uh, and then on the, the topic of social security communications, uh, interesting work connecting uh, households' financial understanding and awareness and planning for retirement to the Social Security Benefit Statement. 
communication. Really discouraging to see that defunded. And I guess my, my personal thought is the funding of that should be viewed through the lens of a return on investment uh, as opposed to a current expense. It seems like short money for a, a very high return payoff in terms of uh, people's changed behavior. And again, continued research here is, is uh, would be very interesting and very welcome and I think high payoff. Inclusions, uh, important area of research for many constituencies, uh, as I tried to lay out. It's a good start, given available data in recent economic cycle. Uh, the magnitude of the observed effects are likely to evolve over time. And it's very important to expand this line of research and refine this line of inquiry as we have more data. Yeah.